And welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and these are the Simic staples that I'm putting in my Commander decks. Continuing on with my series, we're now into the two color combinations. Decided to start out with Simic, and I just want to make a note here, again, sort of reiterating what's going on. These are the cards that I'm sort of going to auto-include in all my decks, depending on the color combinations. I don't love playing lots of staples and auto-includes and all that stuff. I know my channel actually sort of goes against that narrative a little bit, but there's always going to be those cards, particularly the ramp, the removal, and the card draw that you're going to be putting in all your decks no matter what you're doing, right? Obviously, there's some wiggle room depending on what your deck is doing, but these are the ones that I am almost always going to be putting in my decks. And I would say that these videos are more for maybe newer players to know the kind of cards that you play in this format. If you're not used to the cards that are played that aren't going to get played in other formats, typically, there's not going to be a lot of weird fringe cards on these lists. I got lots of other videos for that kind of stuff. This is more the boring stuff, the stuff that you're going to see in almost every game. I should also know for those who don't don't know simic is blue and green right so if you're a really newer player and you don't know what the term simic means it means blue and green together so starting out with something that of course simic does really well because you do have the green which is the ramp three visits and nature's lore are sort of my go-to's i like the two mana ramp spells in particular these ones will go get a forest card which means you can go get say for example that breeding pool in your simic deck which will fix you in both your colors and also it can enter the battlefield untapped as well so that's a huge bonus there these are probably the best options in most decks for ramping i think always got to put sakura tribe elder in there again that's a personal favorite of mine two mana ramp spell goes and gets a basic land but i mean in a lot of other situations just having an ability staple on a creature can be better even late in the game if you don't need the lands you can just throw this guy down and he can be a chump blocker for you so just an auto include for me i also like to use a lot of other creature ramp like farhaven elf and Wood Elves. In particular, in my Tishana deck, I have these guys because you can blink them, right? And that's sort of a blink strategy. Whenever you have these abilities stapled on creatures, you can sort of reuse them and even abuse them. Wood Elves, in particular, again, gets you that forest card that enters the battlefield untapped, so that's extra good. And I still really like Sky Shroud Claim. I don't know how many people still play it. It's a four mana spell that gets land, so I don't know if people are sort of shying away from that. You're getting two forest cards, so again, Again, you can get that breeding pool or whatever and they're coming into the battlefield untapped so i think it's still a pretty great card because you're not necessarily just ending your turn right on turn four i can tap out to cast this and get two lands that are untapped so that i can still do something else i really like that a lot and you're already up to six mana which should probably be able to cast you almost everything in your deck something else that simic does really well because blue does it really well of course is counter spells i've been putting swan song in my decks for a long long time but i am starting to replace it with an offer you can't refuse one blue mana instant counter target non-creature spell its controller creates two treasure tokens these cards are very comparable obviously which one's better i don't know swan song is really really expensive and an offer you can't refuse is not so for me that's a great reason to put an offer you can't refuse into your deck over swan song if you're looking for a budget option i think probably giving your opponent two treasure tokens is worse than giving your opponent a bird token but i really like that an offer you can't refuse can also counter planeswalkers artifacts right there has been situations where i'm holding a swan song in my hand my opponent casts an artifact and i can't counter it so for me an offer you can't refuse is going in all my blue decks now i love it and negate you know i like negate again i've talked about this a lot i almost always will counter the non-creature spells it's rare that i want to counter a creature spell simic deals with creatures pretty well so that's usually not an issue only situation there is the crater hoof pretty much where it's going to come down and just end the game and a removal spell isn't going to help other than that it's almost always going to be the non-creature spells that you're going to be countering and i think negate is a solid one it's one and a blue so in a simic deck you don't have to worry about having the two blue i don't put straight up counter spell in my simic decks you could i just don't play a lot of counter spells at all so in a simic deck three that's it three counter spells i'm done 
That's enough for me. I use my counter spells for emergencies only. That's all. I'm not just going to sit there countering everything my opponents do. I use it only for that game winning play typically or the play where I'm going to get completely blown out. Like maybe my opponent's playing a Cyclonic Rift or something like that. By the way, since we're talking about Cyclonic Rift, I'm not going to include that in this list because I've just stopped putting Cyclonic Rift in all my decks. So for anyone wondering why it's not in here, I guess I'm talking about it now, but I do not include Cyclonic Rift in any of my decks anymore. Moving on to the card draw and obviously that's something that Simic does really really well but I don't really have any auto includes if you play Ristic Study in your decks then that could be one because I guess Ristic Study is just good in any situation but really card draw in Simic is very dependent on what your deck is doing there's lots of great options obviously blue draws cards really well and green draws cards really well so if you look at cards like Coastal Piracy and Rishkar's Expertise for example both really great card draw options but completely different depending on what you're doing, right? If I'm playing a deck that has lots of little creatures that are going to be getting in for damage, Coastal Piracy would be better. If I have lots of big creatures, Rishkar's Expertise is going to be better, right? So it really depends on what you're doing, but obviously there is a ton of options. I don't have any particular draw spells that are auto-includes for me in a Simic deck. Depending on what I'm doing is going to depend on what direction I go down, and I'm going to have lots of options there, obviously because Simic does that very well. Let's talk about the removal. Also, something that Simic does really, really well. And of course, Beast Within, if I'm playing a green deck, no matter what the color combination is, I'm playing Beast Within. I think it's probably the best removal spell in the entire format. I love versatility in my removal spells and Beast Within is going to hit any permanent, right? There's just always going to be the situation. I know people love creature removal, but there's always going to be the situation where your opponent has that really powerful enchantment or maybe even that really powerful land that is just taking over the game and Beast Within can hit all of them. I love this card. It goes in all of my green decks. Bane of Progress is another card that I absolutely love that goes in almost all my green decks. I mean, obviously, this is going to destroy all artifacts and enchantments. So if you happen to be in a theme that is running lots of artifacts and enchantments, you might not want to play it. I have made a couple of decks in my time that have not had Bane of Progress because it hurts me too much. But pretty much all the rest, I'm putting it in there, it is just such a huge blowout a lot of times. And then on top of it, again, it's on a creature. It's going to be a huge creature likely and then on top of that you can reuse it blink effects or whatever another great one reclamation sage that you can reuse and blink and whatnot another one that i put in almost all my decks three mana to destroy an artifact and our enchantment is not great but i just love that it's on a body again i can blink it or i can just use my rex sage as a chump blocker I, I think you know that in itself holds a lot of value cross and grip which is one a lot of people use and i don't for me i'm gonna choose reclamation sage over cross and grip in this slot lot almost always because I don't really think the split second helps like I know a lot of people like the split second for me I don't find it to be very helpful if you're in a play group that throws around lots of counter spells you might want to for me I would much rather have that ability on a creature that I can reuse or chump block with I also really like Nature's Claim and Mass Vandal, two other great options. Mass Vandal, of course, has the Changeling, which can be great if you're in any sort of tribal theme. You have to exile a creature card from your graveyard, but in a Simic theme, that's probably not going to be an issue. Usually, you're going to have a lot of creatures in your deck. Also is an exile effect, which you're not going to see much in Simic colors for artifacts and enchantments. And then Nature's Claim is really just one of the most efficient artifact and enchantment removal spells in the format. So again, it's one that I pretty much put in all my green decks. Green doesn't do creature removal very well, but blue sure does. So Pongify and Rapid Hybridization, again, two of the most efficient creature removal spells in the format. Just one blue mana to destroy a creature. You're giving your opponent a 3-3 token, but in a commander game, not typically a big deal. Also instant speed, which is going to be important as well. I also play Reality Shift a lot. Again, having those exile effects is going to be important a lot of the times. You don't want your opponent throwing down an Avacyn and just being like, okay, well, game over for me, I guess. It's nice to have options that way. You have to be careful with the manifest though, right? Its controller is going to manifest the top card of their library. And sometimes they can replace that creature with even a better creature, right? Because they can pay the mana for it and flip it over. You do have to be careful there. And I really, really love Curse of the Swine. It's one of my favorite removal spells in the whole format because it is sort of a board wipe, essentially. It's like a targeted board wipe 
And in Simic Colors, that's the one thing where you are a little held back is the dealing with massive amounts of creatures, right? Green doesn't deal with massive amounts of creatures very well, and blue doesn't really do it either. There isn't really any blue creature board wipes unless you're talking about the ones that bounce creatures to hand, which is good against token creatures because they don't come back, but against all the other creatures, your opponents can just recast them the next turn, so it's a lot of times will just slow them down a little bit. Curse of the Swine is going to exile those creatures, right? And for each creature exiled this way, again, you're going to give your opponents those 2-2 two, two green boar creature tokens, but again, not a really big deal. Usually that's a perfect trade-off. The fact that you can put X into this and exile two creatures if you want, if there's two really troublesome creatures on the board, or you can get up to like seven or eight creatures if you got the mana, and Simic typically does have the mana, being able to target like seven creatures on the board and exile them all is just a really powerful effect. Green gets stuff out of your graveyard really, really well, and as a lot of people are not shocked by, Simic Colors does a lot of things really, really well. So green is covering the base of I get stuff out of my graveyard. Of course, Eternal Witness is another personal favorite of mine. One of my favorite cards in Magic, period, of all time in any format. I love this card. Again, I love stuff stapled on creatures. I love ETB creatures. You can reuse it. You can blink it. You know, back to that whole script. Just one of my favorite cards ever. You know, late in a commander game, it's just one of those cards that I love pulling off the top. It's like, wow, now every single card in my graveyard I can have access to. You know, it's just so great. I also am a huge fan of Balagid Recovery. Took me a little while to get around on the MDFC lands, but it can replace a land in your deck. I don't typically do a one for one you could it does enter the battlefield tapped which can slow you down a little but again late in the game just being able to return target card from your graveyard to your hand is really really handy right that's a card that you definitely want to see later in a game to give you access to your graveyard like that a couple more auto includes for me in a simic deck heroic intervention just one of the best spells in the format i think i mean making all your permanents hexproof and indestructible is such a huge blowout a lot of times like this this to me is comparable to say a cyclonic rift right and i know people will think that's a weird comparison but if i cast a cyclonic rift the reason people hate that card so much is because i'm blowing up everyone's board and i get to keep all my stuff heroic intervention can be the same way but in reverse i mean obviously it doesn't help against a cyclonic rift but any other board wipe someone blows up all the permanents you get to keep all yours right i've seen this happen so many times in a game where for only two mana you get this massive advantage where you get to keep your whole board and nobody else has anything it can be such a blowout a lot of times i I've seen people just straight up win the game by casting a heroic intervention at the appropriate time. I really like Neoform, and I don't know if this is necessarily an auto-include for me, but every Simic deck I think I've ever made, I put it in, so maybe it is. You're gonna have lots of creatures, right? So it's always gonna be a very usable spell. Green, blue, sorcery as an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature. Search your library for a creature card with mana value one, plus the sacrificed creature's mana value. Put that card onto the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it then shuffle and again just like i talked about about all these creatures like the wood elves and the eternal witnesses and the wreck sages and the masked vandals and all these creatures these utility creatures in green which you're always going to have lots of in your deck you can just now reuse them right i'm going to cast my masked vandal then later in the game i can sacrifice it to go get an eternal witness that's just such fantastic value there's always going to be a creature on the board that you can then sacrifice to go get another value creature Creature, so I like this card a lot in a Simic deck. I also really like Aether Spouts. Overall, I like Aether Spouts. I put it in my mono blue decks all the time. I will also put it in my Simic decks as well because, again, Simic doesn't deal with mass creatures a lot, right? That Crater Hoof situation, now this is a solution for that, right? Other than Cyclonic Rift, right? If you're not putting Cyclonic Rift in your deck, this can be a little bit of a replacement for it, sort of. You know, like for me, throughout the, my history of playing the format Cyclonic Rift, I probably probably used against that mass attack more than anything else. That's what I used it for a lot. Aether Spouts is a little bit of a replacement there. You're putting those creatures on the top or bottom of their owner's libraries, which can be such a blowout. Like that is really tough for your opponent to try to make that decision. If they want to keep them, they're going to put them on top of their library and then they're just going to be drawing them for the next however many turns, right? So it's going to slow them down immensely. Again, this card can be a huge blowout. And if your opponents know you are playing it, like a lot of my patrons know I play this card a lot, they're going to be wary of attacking you, right? You just sit there with five mana open and they're going to be like, well, I'm not attacking him with my crater hoof. I'll attack someone else, right? It can even psych your opponents out a lot of times where they don't even want to attack you. 
As far as the lands go, you know, again, you have the usual suspects and I will point everyone to my utility lands list to check out the ones that I think you should put in every deck. Scavenger Grounds is a great one because you need graveyard hate. You need land destruction and stuff like that as well. Actual blue green lands though, I'm going to give a shout out to Lajara Mirror Lake. I think that's a great one. It enters the battlefield tapped. Taps to only add a blue, but that's okay. I really like the ability to green green and a blue and tap sacrifice. Sacrifice Lit Jar Mirror Lake. Create a token that's a copy of target creature you control, except it enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. Activate only as a sorcery. So this is just a really great utility land. Again, later in the game, now I can get another effect off of any of those creatures. Again, going back to that whole thing, any of those creatures I have in play, I got the Eternal Witness, I got the Rex Sage, maybe I even got the Bane of Progress, I can create a token copy of it and get that fantastic ETB again. Or I can just create a token copy of something else but in particular i think it's great in a simic deck because you tend to have a lot of those creatures with the etb effects and you can just get the extra effect again so i like putting it in all my simic decks because it can be fantastic value later in the game but that is all that is my list for simic staples that i'm putting in my commander decks what did I miss? What are you guys putting in your Simic decks, the auto includes for you that are going to go in all your Simic decks, no matter what? Let me know in the comments below, but that is it for today, and thanks for tuning in.